Hello, this is Brian Castro from BetterChessTraining.com and welcome to The Road to Cleveland. This will be my candid journey as I prepare for the Cleveland Open Tournament, which will be August 15th through the 17th in Cleveland, Ohio. It's about six weeks away and I hope you'll join me for the ride. So since this is the first installment of this series, I thought I would go over uh, the goals that I want to achieve during this preparation period for the tournament. Uh, the first one is to uh, sharpen my tactical eye. I will uh, be spending a lot of time doing tactical problems on, and my favorite place to do this is chesstempo.com. Also I want to develop mental discipline. There's two areas specifically that I want to improve. The first one is working on my mental attitude and getting rid of my negative thoughts during my play. I had a recent conversation with uh, Greg Liberto, the head coach who talks about this and focuses on this on his in his coaching and it really had a lot of insight for me and I'm going to be trying to practice that. The second area of mental discipline is spending time on task. Uh, when I play online or when I'm playing in person I want to spend more time during the game thinking about my moves and what I need to be doing instead of uh, surfing the internet or browsing around or walking around. So those are the two areas that I'm going to be working on before the tournament. Also I want to be comfortable within my uh, opening repertoire during the middle games. Uh, I am to some extent but what I'm going to be doing is looking for holes in my repertoire. There's certain openings that I don't play very often but our major uh, openings that I might run into and instead of spending too much time memorizing uh, theory which might not happen if I have a general idea of the general plans then I think I'll do a lot better than maybe I have in the past uh, this will take a lot of analyzing uh, master games and really trying to synthesize those plans well let's take a look at the current state of affairs uh, my current USC rating, USCF rating is 1822 I'm a Class A player. Hopefully that will be going up after uh, the Cleveland Open. I will be playing, uh, actually I haven't fully decided whether to play in the Open section or there is an under 2100 section. And so I will be um, giving that information as soon as I make that decision. Uh, my current ICC standard rating, which is the main place where I play longer serious games, is 1838. And my chest tempo standard rating is also 1838. So I will be using those as metrics during this series to track my improvement. Here's an example from one of my games where I'm actually up an exchange. After rook takes e8, queen takes d4, queen takes f5, rook to g3, I'm fairly comfortable and I should uh, probably win this game. Um, let me move to a separate part and shows you, show you what happens. Later, uh, after about 80 more moves, um, the game went, went over 100 moves, uh, I got into this position. Black uh, threatens the h4 pawn, and instead of looking at what my opponent can do, I play the uh, double question mark uh, h5. And after this, my opponent plays bishop to e4, and I end up resigning a couple moves later. Um, going back, if I would have uh, just played something like rook to g5, unfortunately, I probably can't win this position anymore, but at the very least, I'm not throwing away the game totally. After king takes h4, king to f6, g2, rook to g7, king to h3, um, king to f5, I probably just have to uh, take this pawn soon. King to h2, king to f4, and here um, I it is a draw. In this particular position uh, of a game, I actually end up winning the game, but again, some uh, I made some tactical errors, and here's one of them that is just uh, exemplary of the types of mistakes I'm making and things I want to improve upon. Uh, in this position, for example, I play e4. And the idea, of course, being that if d takes e4, knight takes e4. But 
my opponent finds uh, a nice in-between move. Bishop takes c5, and after rook takes c5, my opponent wins a pawn with d takes e4. Of course, uh, I end up battling back, and let me show you what happens towards the end of the game. This is the end of that game, and I fought back uh, to have even material, and it seems like my opponent has some uh, slight advantage because his pawns are further advanced, but I think it's fairly even because I could probably generate enough counterplay with my queen and bishop. Uh, however, my opponent makes his own mistake, queen to f5, and you could probably see it almost instantly, bishop to g4, pinning the queen. My opponent plays king to e6, and I play queen to e6 check. It's kind of funny because this was about a week after losing to that uh, painful pin uh, in the previous game that I showed you. And in the final game position I want to show you today, uh, this illustrates another issue I've been having uh, similar to the first game I showed you, which is just putting away uh, the winning position. And here, uh, it's not a totally one position, but it's definitely one where I feel I have the advantage in initiative. Um, I'm playing white here, and you can see I'm pressing on uh, white's king here with my rook here on the b file, for example, and these pawns, um, these pawns here getting ready to push up, as well as my knight uh, here. Um, other ideas, of course, are uh, my bishop coming in to put pressure as well as castling in order to get my other rook into the game while uh, almost all of, except for his queen, all of black's pieces are still on the on the back rank or having moved uh, after leaving the back rank. So in this particular position I actually uh, blunder and I play knight to c5 and after this in and of itself is not a blunder, but my following move definitely is. After bishop takes c5, I thought, oh, why don't I open the b-file? So I played b takes c5, and he plays queen takes a5 check. And the point is, during my calculations, I didn't even consider this. Uh, fortunately, um, or actually, it, my further analysis shows that I might have some compensation for the pawn because of my development and, and open lines to the king. However, it's just uh, the type of thinking in terms of not seeing my opponent's threats that I want to avoid in my games. So based on uh, where I'm at right now with the game, my objectives this week is to spend less time trying to memorize openings, uh, which I have been cutting down lately, and more time analyzing middle games within my opening repertoire. This means going to my uh, the model games within my repertoire books, as well as just analyzing other um, games with the same opening variations within my repertoire. I also want to spend more time analyzing my games, uh, particularly my losses. It might mean uh, spending a little less time playing Blitz, uh, although I've found those very helpful as well to practice my openings and spending more time with the uh, you know on chess base of course uh, another aspect of that um, that that I'll talk about in another article or video is I want to spend less time using the the chess engine to analyze and more time analyzing it myself to, to develop that discipline uh, I want to increase the uh, time on task during my games. Right now I'm averaging around 80%. If I could push that up to 85% in the two or three long games I have this week, uh, that would be great. And then I want to work on being more present during my games. I'm going to use some of the strategies that I learned from Greg Liberto, and I'll put a link up to to my interview with him so he you can check out those strategies as well. In any case, this is the uh, first installment of The Road to Cleveland. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you'll support me and keep me accountable as I upload uh, future videos each week to uh, track my progress. Thank you, and have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you want to get updates to upcoming videos. Also, give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Recently, I did an interview with Greg Liberto, the head coach, about crushing your ants, your automatic negative thoughts to play your best game ever. Check it out by clicking on the link below.